All right. Shalom. Call law. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Bashim, Baka Kodash. Double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, teaching in truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe. All right. In truth and sincerity. And under the banner of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. All right. Uh. Salaki so for uh, taking a while having technical difficulties over here with the uh, Wi-Fi All right, and the upload speeds And um Lord willing This show will be able to get out All right, uh And I hope it's edifying Okay, so in uh, part one I was talking about The end of the world Through Esau Which is through uh Let's get it I, I want to be on point. All right. Second, second Ezra six and nine. Okay. Second Ezra six and nine says, "For well, Esau is the end of the world." So, brief recap, you know. We know how Esau is the end of the world through his uh, philosophies, all right, uh, destruction of the ecosystem, destruction of uh, nations and men's souls, man, okay, to be blunt, all right, and all this is going to get him a swift kick in the ass, all right, and the second part that I want to go into is Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. So, it's some precursors or uh, things that have to be handled before we can start ruling in this world. Okay. And Lord will, you know, um, I'm able to uh, project that through the scriptures, you know. So first and foremost, you know, uh, let's just go to Proverbs 29 and 2, because this, this is why it has to be uh, another ruling uh, kingdom that has to come, all right? And it's Proverbs 29 and 1. I'll start at 1. He that began being, it's lucky, he that being often reproved, hardened in his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in, th in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear fruit, the people mourn. Okay? And that's why they have to be taken down, man. Right, they have to be taken out because the way that they have this society running is is detrimental to every living being on the planet. Okay, because if we let this red devil, okay, which is the so-called white man, which is a, a Edomite in a collective whole. Okay, and his uh, progenitor's name was Esau. All right, if we let him keep on ruling, this place is going to be ran to to powder, man. Okay, everything's going to be dilapidated. Everything's going to be falling apart. Everything's going to be out of course, like we see the beginning of. 
right now in the end of result of right now okay uh, it only took him about 400 years for this to happen man okay just a little over 400 maybe okay for this to happen so this man is not worthy or deemed uh, uh, official enough I want to say official enough to, to run countries and run uh, the planet so to speak but we know what people are all right and we're gonna get into that uh, though as well you know so and that being said what's gonna have to be done is these people are gonna have to be taken out of rulership all right and the way that we're gonna take them out of rulership one way and I can use this right here is uh Isaiah the fourteenth chapter all right so uh, let me go straight to the point I read one Isaiah fourteen and one for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land we're going back home which is the the home uh, uh, or the land of Israel okay and the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the, the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives who captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors and that's the bottom line right there man okay only with complete rulership over them are we able to uh, start getting this place back on track because during this time what's going to happen is they're going to start building up the, the land alright we're going to get that in Isaiah 60 and uh, when I say building up the land I'm talking about our homeland, which is Jerusalem, all right, over there in the Middle East, man, because if you go to Obadiah, uh, the 18th verse, it said that these people weren't going to uh, have neither root nor branch anymore, so anything that they, they uh, produce would be for the so-called Israelites, uh, northern kingdom and the southern kingdom prospectively and the tribes within it okay and then the other nations are also going to be in captivity as well all right but they're going to get their own uh, uh lands back and they're going to get their portion but they're always going to be in uh tribute to us man which are the uh nation of Israel underneath Yahweh Shai and you know underneath Yahweh Yahweh Shai and King David alright let's see if I can get some more meat off of this I want to read that in 1660 okay And this is just going into it what, what uh proverbs 29 and 2 said yea the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of lebanon saying since thou art laid down no fella is come up against us so that's talking about these other nations and the trees are referring to people in this verse Isaiah 14 and 8 and no fella has come up against us which means the 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 devil okay to cut them down because the fella is a, a lumberjack so no man is going to come up against them anymore which is the the so-called edomite you know because we're we're going to rule in righteousness man we're not going to be starting wars we're not going to be uh taking things because they're going to give them on to us man we are the people we are the israelites and we are the rightful rulers of this planet man and it's going to show and prove, man, if it's in the scriptures, it's, it's got to be truth to it, okay? Because the scriptures are the light. The scriptures are truth. 
scriptures are the word of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and you know the Lord is not the author of confusion. Okay. It says, Hell from beneath its move for, for thee to meet thee at thy coming, it stirreth up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth it has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. <coughs> and they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become as weak as we? Art thou become light unto us? The pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vows, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms covered thee. Okay? That's just going into uh, how, how the role reversal changed on Esau, man. Okay? Because the kings of the nation, which are these other heathen countries, man, they're going to they're gonna speak unto Edom and say, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? <laughs> You know, and just reading on, you know, this is so-called Edom's uh, thought process or the thoughts that they did have. In verse uh, 17, it goes on to talk about the destruction of it. All right. But the main verse that I wanted to get was uh, Isaiah 14 and 1 and 14 and 2, because that's how we're going to move on to our rulership into this place man and that's the beginning of the the world all right the new world isaiah 60 all right <clears throat> well before we can get to that part um well yeah i'll read this part first and then go back It says, Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to thy brightness of thy rising. All right, so this is combinating uh, these three verses, right? So the first verse is, is talking about the, the Israelites that's waking up okay the the second verse is talking about the israelites that <clears throat> that are uh, uh not woke but they're they're uh still hope for them man okay something has to happen for them to start uh understanding all right because they're still in darkness man they still love the ways of this world they're still caught up in um, BS, so to speak, the philosophies that uh, the so-called white man has given them. When I say the so-called white man, I'm talking about Esau, which is Edom, or the Edomites, the collective, okay? And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy horizons, okay? And these Gentiles right here, and this... uh. Let's see what Gentiles these are. Go e, okay. Let's just see. Nation people, so the other nations are going to come on to us, man. All right. They're gonna be uh, amazed at the light and the brightness of that rising, just like it says in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Lift up thy eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. The sun shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. And that's talking about uh, Israelites, man. Okay, the Israelites coming, coming back. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Okay. 
and the forces of the Gentiles in this scripture right here. Let's see what that word Gentile means. You know, I'm just going into it because I, I want to be uh, complete. And these uh, are talking about the other nations. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna be in our in our stead, not in our stead, but uh, under subjection to us. Okay. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries and the Midian, Ephan, all the they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth their praises of the Lord. Okay, and that's what I was talking about. They're giving tribute right now. Okay. Verse 7. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of ne Neoboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with an acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Okay. And that's that's more more uh, uh, praising that the the people of the Lord are going to be in um, in rulership, man. Who are these that fly as clouds and as doves to their windows? Meaning, when we get there, we step off the chariots, and um, you know, we go into our houses. Surely the owls shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first to bring the sons from far, silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord, thy power, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Okay, so this is this is all going on in the new build up kingdom okay we're gonna be we're gonna be coming from other nations it's gonna be people getting dropped off which are the israelites getting dropped off to live in their homeland once again then you're gonna get the ones that uh coming from afar off bringing stuff home to jerusalem which is our new home once again okay from their lands all right the lord is going to gather us all okay and some of them going to come with their with their uh the 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 tribute from other countries man okay that's what this means surely the owl shall wait for me and the ships of tarshish first to bring thy sons from afar the silver and their gold with them unto the name of the lord thy power and to the holy one of israel because he has glorified thee all right and so these men they're going to come from far and near man and the men that i'm talking about are the israelites man okay and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto them. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So they're going to be underneath our subjection. And this is the Lord ruling, therefore the gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentile, and that their king may be brought kings may be brought okay so they're all about tribute all of this is about tribute man okay for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted and the one kingdom that is going to perish okay is uh esau edom you can finish the rest of that but i'm at the point where i'm going to switch to uh What's going to happen when they're going to be wasted? All right. And this is a part of our, our taking back the reins of power, so to speak. All right. <coughs> Let's go to Isaiah 27 11. And it says, Yet the defense city shall be desolated, and the habitation forsaken, and left like a wilderness. There shall the calf feed, and there shall he lie down and consume the branches thereof. When the boughs thereof are withered, they shall be broken off. The women come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore he that made them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will show them no favor. So when you go back to uh, <coughs> Salaki, Isaiah 14, 
And one and said, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Okay. It's just talking about that. <coughs> Salaki. And you know, the scripture where it says, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. That goes with this one too. Okay. With uh, Isaiah 27 and 11. And uh, let me just explain that when the boughs there are, are with it, they shall be broken off. Okay. So what that has to do with is like I read in 60 and um, and 8. Who are these? Not who are these? Let me see. Uh, Salaki. Isaiah 16 and 12 for the nations and kings that will not serve thee shall perish yea these nations shall be utterly wasted so Esau Edom is one of those nations okay it says when the boughs there are withered they shall be broken off okay so when there is no more use to us all right what do you do and gardening is called uh, pruning all right cutting off the dead energy uh, so the the energy, well, cutting off the dead branches so the energy of the the roots don't flow into them. Okay, and that goes back to uh, uh, Obadiah, the 18th verse. All right, the woman coming is Israel. Okay, the woman come, and that's that's talking about the Israelites, man, because uh, the Lord. Uh, 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 how can I say it? The Lord, <coughs> uh, hmm, brain freeze right now. The Lord referred to us as calm and delicate women, Slaki. Okay, and they're gonna set them on fire. Who is the and set them on fire? They're talking about the Edomites, man. All right. They're going to be gathered together like sticks, it says in the scriptures, and burned like fire. For it is a people of no understanding. And what people have no understanding, let's go to Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up. Uh, I'll go to 3, Salaki. Yeah, 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And right now, you know, we are in that in that part that said that it will surely come, man. We're about to have World War Three, and it's on and popping right now as I speak, you know. It's here. Alright, but the, the, the real part of surely coming, man, is the Lord coming back. And delivering us out of this is captivity, man. All right. That part is not going to tear you neither. And neither will the, the nuclear missiles. All right. The nukes will come. And it's going to burn up this land. And I'm going to get that too. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. Okay. So, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. It's talking about Esau Edom because as you can see in uh in um Isaiah the 14th chapter he he proclaimed himself high and Obadiah he proclaimed himself higher than the most high okay so his soul is pumped up man it's pumped up on high all right his pride is on on a, a, a jillion okay so to speak but his his his, his, his he ain't an upright person man he's lowered in dirt like Genesis described him okay he crawled on his belly and eats the dust okay but the just shall live by his faith and that's talking about the Israelites right so Going back to this to 27 and 11, which is Isaiah, 
Okay. It says the women come and set them on fire for it is a people of no understanding. Okay. And that's that's included with the wicked too. Alright. Let's get that in um Proverbs two. Okay. It says, For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. So, that's talking about <coughs> uh, uh, the upright shall dwell in the land, which is talking about the Israelites, all right? In the land of Jerusalem, and the perfect shall remain in it. And how are they being perfect? Because they're going to be under subjection under us, man. Okay? But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth. And the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. And that's only talking about the wicked, which are two thirds of our people. And uh, the other nations are going to perish. Okay. And we know ultimately at the end of, uh, of captivity for the so called Edomites, they're, they're going to be rooted out of it. All right. Altogether. But the people of the other nations in the two thirds, you know, <clears throat> they have a chance on the other side when they come back. One's going to come back in complete rulership, and the other nations, okay, which don't include uh, Esau, because he's the nation with total domination coming his way, all right, and decimation coming his way, all right. They're going to have their fair shot, okay? Two-thirds of our people want to come back in rulership. And, 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 and you know, heathen nations going to come back in subjugation and uh, fairness of rulership, all right? So I hope this was uh, uh, edifying, to say the least. And I want to say, call uh, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Bashem, Bakar, Kordash. Alright. Shalom.